I'm Brenda. Today I'm gonna make uh, Jamaican jerk uh, chicken breast. I'm gonna grill it and I'm gonna make a mango avocado sauce to put on the top. Plus, we're gonna serve it over some coconut rice. have the coconut milk to use for the rice because I'm going to use it for something else in a different video. We won't worry about that one. But uh, so I'm going to probably toast some coconut to put in with the rice. If you don't like coconut, don't even worry about it. I need to make the Jamaican jerk seasoning. Here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start mixing all those seasonings over here together. I'm going to tell you what I'm putting in it. So no worries there. I'm going to tell you all story. And this is the new part. I'm going to start telling you all the stories. We're going to see how this goes. I want you to tell me uh, each, every other week, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, every other video, I should say, I'll tell you all a story. I'll tell you a little story. It could be a long story. It could be a short story. Depends on what I'm making. But I would like you all to leave a comment and let me know. Do you think it's fact or do you think it's folklore? And then on my following video, the next week, I'm going to let you know, is it fact or is it folklore? I just want to see what you all think about some of these stories I'm going to come up with and tell you all about. Yeah. Is it true or is it false? Fact or folklore? You won't know unless you tune in for the next, uh, on my next video. You won't know the answer. I know, I'm trying to get y'all to watch my videos, what can I say? <laughs> but, let's go ahead and get started on this. Anyway, I've already got me some chicken uh, breast thawed out. And again, I'm going to grill them because it is it is a warm day. Didn't really want to get my oven going. So I'm going to do that outside. And it'll be later on in the day. But I just need to go ahead and get my jerk seasoning mixed up so that I can get it on the chicken and let it be marinating in those spices now you don't have to mix your up obviously you can you can buy it pre-made but um, I wanted to go ahead and mix mine up and I'm just gonna mix it in this and then that way we'll have it on hand each time I've got these lined up in the order that I'm uh, gonna use them and I'm getting this from I think it's called hang on a minute I'm gonna tell you Chili pepper grill, I think is the name of, the, uh, of where I'm getting the recipe for this. But, I'm not sure if that's the name of it or not. This is onion powder. I have the hardest time getting onion powder to come out of here. What is up with, you know what? I've got my own onion powder. Hang on just a second, y'all. <laughs> got my own that I made probably why I stopped getting buying the other kind and that's what's in here so this is the one that I told you all about me making I dehydrated uh, the the bottoms of green onions and it, it's got little bits of onion in it and everything I like doing it like that better so I'm just gonna keep on using mine once I use up that other onion powder I'm not gonna use that anymore not that brand anyway but we're going with a tablespoon of onion powder and as I use these I'm just going to sit them back over here so I don't grab the wrong thing and a tablespoon of garlic powder now I'll tell you what the easiest way to do this is for me to get Tom to put the recipe down in the bottom in the description so that's what we'll do
Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, but I don't like nutmeg. If you like jerk chicken, you're eating nutmeg. Just saying. Same thing about cloves. <laughs> I got a sister that says she does not like cloves. But the holiday times, if she's eating my food, there's cloves. I think I'm going to give it just a littlest, the littlest, littlest taste before I put it on my chicken. Because, oh, yeah, see, there was a, I, when I picked that up, there was a chunk of paprika there. They call for paprika. I use smoked paprika. That's the only kind of paprika I keep in my house. There's no need in me keeping both because I always reach for the smoked paprika. So I'm stirring that around with my fingers. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Now that I've got, I'm just gonna. Hmm. Well, it's hot. I can tell you that. But I am gonna put some, add some sugar to it. Get it off my hands. Don't want to get that in your eyeball either. Ooh. Actually, I'd already put two two teaspoons of sh of uh, white sugar in it. Brown sugar. I think it'd be better with brown sugar in it. So I'm gonna add that to it as well. Well, I mean, you like the sweet flavor that. I don't know if you've been to the Caribbean before, but if you've had the jerk chicken in the Caribbean, oh my word, that brown sugar that I can taste in it makes the jerk seasoning for me. So I'm going to mix this all around. And again, I'm going to use my fingers just because I don't want any big lumps in there. And I may put just a little more brown sugar in there than that. Depends. Now, it's more than what you need, because this is, this is for like four chicken breasts. Uh, some of it is. And then the rest of it, you just put it in an airtight container and uh, put your date on there. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't keep it any longer than three months, but in my house, it's not going to last three months because we like jerk chicken. Now, there we go. Now, let's give it a try. Yeah, that's what it needed. Definitely needed brown sugar. So if you want to substitute the, uh, ooh, ooh, that was a red pepper. <laughs> Crushed red pepper flake there on my tongue. If, my suggestion would be to replace the white sugar, the uh, granulated white sugar, with a tablespoon of brown sugar. Or my favorite, brown swerve, because it's got that maple flavor to it. And this needs maple flavor to it, in my opinion. All right. Let me wash these hands, because we don't want this stuff in my eyeballs. And I'll be right back. Okay, I had Tom come in here and give it a taste. He likes it. He said it's just right, so we're going to leave it at that. And uh, I can always add a little bit more to mine if I need it. Now... Let me get all this put away, and then next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make our mango uh, avocado salsa to go on the top. My mouth just waters when I think about that because I absolutely, if you've watched any of my videos in the past, I absolutely love mango and, uh, mm, and avocado to my favorites. So let me get this put. Y'all want to come clean that up for me? You can come clean it up for me if you want to. Come clean that mess up for me if you want to. <laughs> Alright, I'll be back in a minute. Okay. I did decide, yes I did, to go ahead and put some a little bit of chili powder in there and some uh, dehydrated cilantro. So that's in there too. But it'll be in the it'll all be down in the description box. Okay. Now put it in this container so that I'll be able to keep it fresh.
I always like to smell my jars. I don't know why that smells like pickles, but it does. <laughs> How's it come out of the dishwasher smelling like pickles? Can you tell me that? that in there. Now, once my chicken breasts thaw completely, then we'll go ahead and uh, put our jerk seasoning on it. And I just want to give it a little stir while it's in there to get some of those, like the crushed pepper, crushed red pepper flakes and the parsley and the cilantro. Yeah, there we go. Get that up there at the top. There we go. Look, isn't that cute? I know. It's seasonings, Brenda. Yes, it is, but it's so cute. And it's a little jar, and I've already got me a, a sticker up here so I can put on there what's in it. I just hope with putting the brown sugar in there that I don't cause it to clump. But I do have a little clay uh, sugar bear, brown sugar bear that I can stick in there. If it does, it'll help it. All right, all right, up next is the mango avocado salsa. Now, I'm putting one fourth of a red onion is what I'm gonna use and I'm gonna dice that up. And cut that edge off of it there. A little bit of the root we don't want to eat. <laughs> so. It's going to be uh, one fourth of a medium size red onion diced. You want to dice that kind of small. You don't want any big chunks of onion. You can use green onion, but I like the flavor of the uh, red onion better when it comes to this, especially. Now, when I fix my coleslaw, it has to be green onions. It has to be green onions or it's just not that Blakeman coleslaw. So. Yeah, I've washed out my bowl that I had a while ago. We're just going to use it. Okay, and now avocado. There we go. Probably see things a little bit better if I lift you up there, huh? Just, but yeah, be sure you wash your, your fruits and veggies, always. Oh, that did not work right. I didn't cut it right. <laughs> this avocado is not as ripe as I would like for it to be. My mango is almost too ripe. The avocado, not quite ripe enough. But it's okay. We'll make do. I'm slicing it. I've got a little tool. I don't know why I don't have it out, but I've got a little tool that helps me do this without worrying about cutting my fingers off. I'm actually dicing it with it, <laughs> with it inside of its shell. Yeah, this thing is just nowhere near as ripe as I would hope it would be. Typically, I can take my avocados and just slice them and pop them right out of there. 
Not today. Mm -mm, not today. All right. Yeah, let me get this. I jacked this all up, y'all. I'm telling you. It's a hot mess. It is a hot mess. I have made it much more difficult on me than I needed to. That's a very small, very small seed in there. Look at that. Hmm. Does the seed get bigger the riper it gets? Anybody know? I don't have a clue. I do not have a clue. I'm just going to peel it. It's just going to be easier for me just to peel it at this point because it's just not ripe the way I need it to be. I like for mine to be like really soft, like almost smushy soft. Especially making avocado uh, spread for toast. I really like it better like that. I probably should let these lay up in the window for a day or two before deciding to do this, but this is what I wanted to fix for supper. Share it with y'all. <laughs> that onion has got me sniffling and eyes are watering, and typically, typically, a red onion won't do that to me. Did today. Show you about some kind of little bowl or something to put all this in. But who knew that this was going to happen? I thought I was just going to have two little shells to take over there and pitch in the trash real quick. If you end up like me in a hot mess with your avocado, don't leave a whole lot of that really dark on there. Trim that off. Because it ain't going to taste good otherwise. Not in my opinion, anyway. All right. Well, <laughs> got that mess out of the way. Now, my mango, different story. It is very soft. So, I hope with it being soft like that, that it's ripe. Because if it ain't, then that just wouldn't be no good either. As I've told some of y'all before, I do have a back injury, and I'm leaning over. I'm not being lazy. I'm leaning over to keep it, keep it, to keep it from hurting. I could pull my stool over here, but I would rather stand if at all possible. All right, let's see how much of this I can get off of here. And something else. Am I cutting this mango right, y'all? I don't have a clue. I cut it and get as much of it off of there as what I can. Until you get to that. I guess that's a seed in there. Until you get to that and then go with what I have. Yeah, that was a very soft mango to, to be so firm inside. That's interesting. See, look. See how I can how I can push on it and it leaves an indention in it? But you hear it as I'm cutting it, it's very crisp sounding. Interesting. Very interesting. I think that's about all I'm gonna be able to get off of it. I think I took a part there I don't need though. Let me get that off of there. And let's go ahead and dice this up. You won't. You, you. Not not bite sized pieces, you know, dice it up to where you get several good tasty bites. I'm actually going to slice that avocado up a little smaller as well. Do you have your favorite recipe for a mango avocado salsa? There's a mango salsa that I used to make all the time. Matter of fact, uh, Mike at Lovey's Fat Life had us on a live show one night and I was making it while we was gabbing. Ooh, I think my bowl might not 
be big enough. And next on our list, lime juice. Ooh, I love lime. I might put two because these are some small little limes that they're selling right now. The the lemons have. Have you all seen the lemons that are being sold right now? Holy smoke, look how big that is. But I'm not using lemon in this, am I? <laughs> no. They actually won't even fit in here. They're so big to squeeze. But my little buddy Benjamin, he likes lemonade. And I like fixing him some fresh lemonade sometimes. He really does like it. <laughs> that little boy will sit and, and if I hand this to him, he will sit and gnaw upon it because he loves sour stuff. Or Unfortunately, our guy that, that uh, supplies our honey for us doesn't have his ready yet. So. so I'll be using this, but it's organic and it's okay. I'm putting about a tablespoon in there. Typically I would mix that with my um, uh, lime juice but and this is cilantro dehydrated cilantro but usually I would mix that with my lime juice because it breaks down the uh, honey real good. Look can you see that? Don't that look good? Do you think that looks good? I don't even have it mixed up yet and it looks good to me. But again, I am a great fan of mango and avocado. I still think I might have put a little bit too much of that red onion in there. What I should do is put me a little bit of pepper in here. Like bell pepper. Because I always put the red uh, bell pepper in my mango salsa that, I, that we use for dip. Oh my goodness. It's just... Y'all know I'm going to taste it. <laughs> I simply must. I must. Do that. Mm -hmm. A little bit of avocado, some mango, some onion. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is so good. Mmm. Now, it would taste better if my mango and my avocado were a little bit more ripe, but they're not. <laughs> Yummy. Mmm. Okay. Let's see. I think I've got everything prepped. Ooh, hello. <laughs> I think I've got everything prepped right now. Just, uh. I'll see y'all again this afternoon when I get this chicken going. And the rice. Don't forget the rice. We're going to go ahead and get our chicken ready to put on the grill. We're going to put um, a little bit of oil on each side. Flip it over. Same thing. Then I'm going to flip them back and put the... Uh, Yes, I'm pouring way too much oil, ain't I? <laughs> I said a little bit. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to put our seasoning on. Tom said just a little bit. <laughs> Remember, this is the, the jerk seasoning that we made earlier.
do it like that. It'd be easier for me. That way I don't over season tongs. He likes seasoning, but not like me. I don't know, I want to taste it in every bite. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, let me get my hands washed up and we're going to head out here to the grill. They're done. Oh yes. Okay, my rice, the rice that we use is just the boil in bag. Boil <laughs> in bag. So, and we used brown rice today. Put it in there and let it boil for seven minutes. Ta-da, perfect every time. <laughs> hands off and get this chicken laid down on here. Okay. And then we have our mango avocado salsa that Tom's going to tell me when to woe on his. I made a mess. <laughs> Not such a pretty blade. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Do you want some of the juice out of the bottom? Yes, please. I need a spoon. Oh, never mind. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just use this um, We want some of that juice out of the bottom there. It's the lime juice and the um, honey, all that stuff, all that deliciousness. Mm -hmm. And me being me, I'm going to put a little bit more of that on the side as well <laughs> to mix in with my rice. You? No, thank you. All right. Look at that. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yummy. Now let's go over here and get set down so we can try it out. While we're having our dinner, I'm gonna tell you all a story. All right. Tom took a bite of his and he didn't even let me get a video of him. So, mm -hmm. Just some of the 
salsa and rice now. Although the mango and avocado weren't as ripe as I wanted them to be, I still really do like the taste of it. So I'm going to tell you all story. And uh, after I tell you the story, on my next video, I'm going to tell you if it's fact or folklore. So, uh, if you don't mind, just leave a comment and tell me what do you think. Fact or folklore. The name of this one is That Hat Saved His Life. Okay. <laughs> Sarah's wanting some of this. She's not getting it, but she wants some of it. Um, in the early 1960s, in this town where we live, the police department wasn't that big. They had like, I don't know, probably 15... 15 officers back then, I think. But they did what was called walk the beat. And, and that meant uh, whatever area they were assigned to patrol, they would have to get out in at least an hour of their of their shift. They had to walk and check the uh, buildings to make sure they were locked and that there were uh, you know, nothing out of, or out of the ordinary that would make, it think, make you think that it had been broke into. So, uh, this one police officer, he was... He was working the beat and walking around, checking all the locks. And he came upon a gas station. Uh, he walked over to start to check the door. Um, and he saw what he thought was a flashlight. And he stood and he watched. And then he saw a man in there. So he stepped back so that the man couldn't see him through the door, the bay doors. And... Uh, as he walked around, he was going to check the back door to make sure it was secure or to see if there was anybody on the lookout, you know, standing out waiting to see, watch for the fuzz, so to speak. <laughs> and uh, so he walked around the back, and as he went around the, to, to, towards the back of the door, he saw that the uh, glass on the main door in the front had been broken. And so he went around, and he checked, and the back door was still secure. And so he turned and he walked to go back around to the front. But before he did, he contacted their dispatch and told them that he needed help, that there was a uh, someone, a burglar inside of the building. And so he started to walk around back to the front to where the other officers would meet him at. And when he went around the corner of the building, the man that had broke in apparently saw him uh, before he came back out. And when the officer stepped around the corner. The man took what's known as a claw hammer. I should show you all that, but I don't have one in here. <laughs> Not going. It's a hammer. It's a hammer, and it's got a little thing on the on the end of it that that you use to pull nails out. Well, when that man stepped around there, he saw that police officer. He he whopped him in the head with the claw part of the hammer. Boink. And uh, of course, the officer went down. And uh, just his, his bleeding a lot. But he managed to wipe the blood from his eyes and, and got a couple shots off at the guy. Missed, obviously, but, well, not necessarily obviously, but he did miss. And his, uh, his co-workers got there, the other police officers, along with, because uh, he had to tell them that he was injured and that the suspect got away. So they chased the suspect down. Yeah, he, he was arrested. And, uh, but the man that was hit in the head with the hammer, uh, they had to take him to the hospital because he was in critical condition. I mean, think about it. Somebody just, you know, draw, draw a hammer back with, with those claws on it and just wham, right, right on the forehead, you know? So they did their x-rays and everything. And, uh, when the other police officers actually went and got his wife who was pregnant at the time and, uh, and she, you know, they didn't have, back then, everybody didn't have two vehicles. They were lucky to have one. So uh, they took her out to the hospital, and the doctor came out and talked to her, and they told her that, uh, you know, he had a very large gash on his forehead, but that when they did their x-ray, he got a, uh, he had a small fracture in his skull, and they were going to have to keep him for a while 
to watch that to make sure it didn't develop to anything more, you know, any, any worse. But, you know, a, a concussion, of course, and then that big old gash on his head that they sewed up, and it took over 100 stitches for them to, to get him sewed back up. Now, my question to you is, do you believe this is fact or folklore? I'll tell you all the ending of this story next week on my next video. So you all be sure to tune in so that you know fact or folklore. So you all take care. If you haven't subscribed yet, I do hope you will click the subscription button and the notification bell so that you know each time that uh, we put content on. And it really helps me if you would give it a thumbs up and share my video. But yeah, leave your comments what you think about the story I just told you and what I said the name of it is. And, uh, oh, and also, um, if you want that recipe, we're going to give you the name of the, uh, we're going to give you the name of the website. Tom will put the name of the website on where I got the recipe. This little dog is down here. <laughs> really wanting some food that she's not going to get.